Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Welcome, welcome. Welcome as you are coming in. Say hello. <clears throat> Let me know where you're watching from. If you're catching the replay, comment replay, hashtag replay so I can come back and say hello. Who I want to be, I am. I am, I am, I am. Ooh, excuse me. How is your day today? How are you feeling? How is your womb space? How is your heart? This is the last day that we will be live unless, you know. Oh no, because we're going to have a, a sacred shopping experience. I forgot. All I wish I could. I love this song. I am the flower. I am the bee. I am fire and I am wind. I accept love and also I give. I am. I am loud and I am mighty. I am. I am silent and I hear light. I am brave and monumental. I am honest. I am gentle. I am. I am God and God is you. What I want to know, I understand. Who could I can? Who I want to be? I am. What I want to know, I understand. Who I want to be, I am. I am, I am, 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 I am. Ah. Hello, hello, hello. Um, that is called I Am by Beautiful Chorus featuring India Ari. It is another favorite. Um, really all the songs by Beautiful Chorus, I think, like, are in heavy rotation in my life. Um, they just have such powerful lyrics, such affirming lyrics. Um, and I'm, I'm on most days very mindful about what I listen to and what I consume because I understand that it becomes a part of me so there are some times when you know I listen to not so um 
beneficial music and I watch not so beneficial television but for the most part I try to be mindful of what I am consuming so that is called beautiful chorus um excuse me that is called I am by beautiful chorus and India Ari so hey y'all happy Sunday y'all we are on day three this has been an amazing journey um i have thoroughly enjoyed coming live with you all and feeling your energy last night was massive if you watched with us live or you caught the replay um we definitely connected to each other we definitely felt the energy of um each other one of our sisters um and it was just a powerful experience for me because i've I've experienced that like being in circle sitting in um physical space with someone but virtually um that was that was massive um uh, and i am so full so fired up so just grateful uh to share this medicine with you guys and um, I'm just so honored that so many of you have heard the call to awaken the womb keeper within and decided to join me on this journey. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Welcome. Uh, hello, Heather. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Leah. Welcome. Welcome. <sighs> we are still healing. <laughs> Um, I don't, I, I do know what it is. I'm not even going to pretend not to know what it is, but it seems like around the same time every day, it's like, I feel worse, like around three thirty, four o'clock and I take a nap and I wake up at like five thirty, and I feel like, oh my gosh, who did it and why? So, um, but we here, it has not stopped us for two days and it will not stop us today. <sighs> so did you catch the replay from day one and day two were there any aha moments any um so yes moments any like wow moments um i've been getting a lot of messages in the inbox and i'm just loving the moments of awareness and awakening that is happening in each and every one of you um this is what it's all about right this is just ah my mission is to help a million women all over the world right and um i don't have to physically touch everyone i don't have to physically speak to everyone by me impacting one person and that one person impacting one person um there's power in that. And so with like 20 of us who are here, whoa, <laughs> we are doing incredible work. So I would like to get us all on the same page to drop us in, to connect so that we can have plenty of time together tonight because tonight we are talking about the physical womb space. I've got some foods for you to um have in your medicine cabinet which is your kitchen some herbs for you to stock up with um we are going to talk about how to physically pamper yourself we're going to talk about pms pampering my sacral um excuse me we're going to talk about some herbs so i want to go ahead and get started so let's take three deep cleansing breaths together as we drop in and listen to the sounds of the sacral chakra singing bowl which wanted to start sooner deep breath in exhale it out deep breath in, releasing everything that you've experienced today, and exhaling it out. We're going to make this one count as our last day. We're going to fill it with intention and power. Deep breath in, and exhale it out with
with a sigh. <sighs> Let's rub our hands together. Let's create that energy. Let's make this space really intentional with everything that we need for ourselves and for our sisters in the circle. That energy is forming. It's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. It is healing energy. It is peaceful energy. It is loving energy. It is all-knowing, all-consuming. Embodying the wisdom that is within us. It's connecting us to our womb space. It's connecting us to our womb space. It's connecting us to our womb space. That energy is going up your wrist, around and around, up to your elbows. It's going up to your shoulders, up to the top of your head. It's spilling out over, creating a cocoon of safety, of sisterhood, of solitude. Forming an egg around you. It is grounding you now. <coughs> Excuse me. Grounding you into the earth. You are stable. You are safe here. You are held here. You are supported here. It's going up to your sacral chakra. It's expanding your creativ your creativity. Your sensuality. Your sexuality. Hmm. Your ability to receive pleasure. Your relationships. Your connections. It's going up to your solar plexus. You are standing tall in your power and your truth. Knowing who you are and what you were sent here to do. You stand tall as you walk into any room. Your head is held high. Strength. High self-esteem. Self-awareness. Self-accountability. It's going up to your heart chakra. It's expanding you. You feel love. You receive love. You see love. You embody love. You give love. You receive love. You have compassion. You have empathy. It's going up to your throat chakra. You're able to speak your truth, speak with words of conviction and clarity and love and peace and joy. Words that build up and edify, not words that tear down. Words that affirm, words that convict. It's going up to your third eye chakra, your ability to see beyond the now, your ability to visualize and to dream, right? Your ability to tap into the spiritual realm in order to see what needs to be seen. In order to bring it earthside to manifest. It's going up to your crown chakra. Your highest self. Your truest self. It's coming forward. Your highest self. Your truest self is coming forward. Your highest self. Your truest self is coming forward. Your highest self. Your truest self is coming forward. And when you are ready, put your right hand on your heart, your left hand on your womb space, and just breathe. And just listen. Listen to your heart. Listen to your mind. Listen to your womb space. I invite you to welcome your womb space to speak to you. I invite you to welcome your womb space to show you it's physical aspects, right? Become aware of any pain that you feel in your womb space. Any reoccurring issues or STDs or STIs. Maybe you have heavy menstrual cycles. Maybe you don't have a cycle at all. Maybe there are fertility issues. Maybe there is an inability to experience an orgasm or pleasure. Really take inventory of what's going on in your physical womb space. Do you have a functioning physical womb? 
Perhaps you've experienced a hysterectomy. Perhaps you've experienced your tubes being tied. Perhaps you are no longer in the phase of hmm, having a menstrual cycle. Maybe you feel lost. Maybe you feel less than. Allow your womb space to speak with, with you, to share with you. How's your pH balance? Okay, I'm just gonna say it. How's your discharge? What does it look like? What does it smell like? Like really, really think about the state of your physical womb now. Do you feed it foods that nourish and give life? Or are you eating death? Are you consuming disease? Inflammation, mucus. Really take inventory of your womb space. Ask your womb space what does she need to be healthy? Is it a fast that is needed? Is it more water that is needed? If you allow her to speak, she will. When you are ready, thank her for sharing and come back to this present moment. Bring your awareness back into the circle. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. How are you? So I know that that was a little different than what we have done um, in the past two days. Because what I find with womb wisdom, um, oftentimes, not even just womb wisdom, just the women that I see in the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique, right? Uh, we do Yoni Steaming. Um, and we, we also talk about the spiritual like womb space when we do our one-on-ones. And oftentimes, people, women, will disregard the physical aspects of their womb space, right? We want to, <coughs> excuse me, embody being a goddess and... <laughs> We want to, um, you know, connect with our womb, but we eat unhealthy foods. We eat um, a lot of dead flesh. We eat a lot of um, processed foods. And listen, again, Javon is on the journey with you. Um, I go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when I'm eating the way that I am supposed to be eating. And then there are times when, you know, I need a good burger once every couple of months. This is a non-judgment zone, so I, I am not judging. But true womb wellness includes what you consume the foods that you eat the amount of water that you drink the amount of water that you drink <laughs> the amount of water that you drink there are two places in your home that can be your own personal healing sanctuary your bathroom and your kitchen. Your bathroom and your kitchen are the two main areas in your home 
that can become your healing sanctuary. So first we're going to talk about some things that you should have in your kitchen. First and foremost, spring water. Spring water is alkaline water. None of this started until we started this live. Give me one second, you guys. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm. First and foremost, the main thing that you need to have that you I would encourage you to have in your kitchen, right, is spring water. Spring water is alkaline. Alkaline water is healthier for you. Um, there is a man named Dr. Sabi. Um, he was really big on alkaline food. According to his research, disease cannot live in the alkaline body. So consuming things that are alkaline, such as blueberries um, and alkaline water, can balance out the pH balance in your body, your body's natural pH balance. The more acidic your body is, the more um, it is a breeding ground for disease, according to the research of Dr. Sabi. So alkaline water is very, very, very important. Um, natural spring water. And you don't have to get water that says like alkaline water. Natural spring water, uh, crystal geisha, I think is what it's called. It's like 99 cents. Um, the store brand spring water. It's 99 cents a gallon. It's really, really good for you. Some other foods that would help to maintain your womb, your physical womb's uh, health. Parsley. Okra. Wheat grains. But you don't want to consume it a lot. Of course, your leafy greens, your salads, but stay away from uh, iceberg lettuce because it doesn't have any nutritional value. No whatsoever. <laughs> Flax seeds. Listen, you guys, I, on a good day, try to consume a smoothie every day with flax seeds in it. It's so good for your reproductive system. It's so good for um, um, your overall health. You've got your lentils, you've got your sprouts, your alfalfa sprouts, things like that. In your kitchen, you want to avoid dairy. Of course, you want to avoid your processed foods. You want to avoid your bottom feeders like clams, oysters, lobster, and shrimp. I'm working on it. And if you can't avoid it altogether, cut back. Right? Everything in moderation. You want to avoid meats like pork, lamb chops, um, beef, chicken. And if you have to eat chicken fish, steamed and baked are best. You want to consume no more than three starches a week. Okay. Here's a good rule of thumb. Try to make your plate as colorful as possible. So your purple cabbage, your, you know, um, purple onions, your mushrooms, your rainbow peppers, your leafy greens. Like the more colorful your plate is, the better. The less processed foods, the better. 
and even like for me because we don't consume a lot of meat we do a lot of what we call play play sausage or play play meat but it's processed so even that trying to um substitute your play play meats or your um plant-based or vegan option meats with like your lentils your um chickpeas your mushrooms things like that like try to use meat substitutes that are actual like natural foods and not processed prepackaged foods and again this is not like clean out your entire refrigerator today toss out everything and like start eating healthy tomorrow you can gradually ease your way into it. When I first started transitioning to a more plant-based lifestyle, because, you know, I still consume some meats, but it's mostly plant-based, I did Meatless Monday. So, like, one day a week, no meat. On Wednesday, one day a week is when I try to, like, make sure that I only consume foods that are good for my womb space on Wednesday. So, I'll start my morning out with a smoothie and you know an avocado half and you know lunch it'll be a salad and then for dinner it'll be something healthy like a, a baked chicken and, and vegetables or something like that or like a baja bowl or something excuse me are you guys with me you're following me excuse me Definitely your fruits, definitely your papayas, your mangoes, your watermelons, your cucumbers. All of that is going to be very, very good for your womb space. And here's the thing, if you're still in the stage of life where you have a menstrual cycle, I guarantee you cutting back meat and including more fruits and vegetables will have a positive impact on your menstrual cycle. I can always tell when I'm consuming a lot of meat or a lot of like processed foods because my cycles are so stinking heavy and my cramps are unbearable. And here's another thing, a reason why you want to make sure that you're consuming healthy foods. Because it affects your moods as well. Which goes back to your physical, um, excuse me, your spiritual womb, your energetic womb. The next thing that you want to do or that you want to have in your kitchen, because we're still on the kitchen, right? The healing sanctuary of your kitchen. Herbs, you guys. <sighs> Herbal remedies are amazing. You can literally heal yourself with herbs. So here's some herbs for womb health. Chamomile. Helps to relax you, relieve painful periods, alleviate stress. Externally, it can be used to relieve vaginal it, uh, itchy and irritation. Chinese angelica is an essential uh, ch Chinese medicine. It helps to treat infertility, regulate your periods, um, and it helps with anemia due to low iron and blood loss it's like the female ginseng yes kimberly herbs are life oh my gosh yes 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 ladies mantle helps to regulate your menstrual cycle it relieves heavy and painful periods cools infusion excuse me a cool infusion as a douche helps with vaginal inflammation. I can't even read my own hand right here, you guys. Ch I think it's pronounced chastity berry. It's 
It's a hormonal regulator. It helps to treat irregular menstrual cycles, PMS, and relieve menopause. And it helps to treat PCOS. And one that we all know about, Black Cohosh. It helps to relieve pain, bloating, and PMS. Another herb that you want to have in your kitchen that you want to cook with as often as possible is sage. And I do not mean the sage that we burn. Like the actual... Um, can't remember the Latin name. I'm not even going to try to remember the Latin name. But the actual like sage leaf that you get... Um, in the cooking aisle <coughs> it's great to season your like chickens and your fish fennel is another good one to cook with it's really really good um i like to se season my spaghetti with it and like my italian um dishes with fennel So when you when you're making your grocery lists how often you you know let's say you go grocery shopping once a week I don't know because it could be I don't want to say it could be expensive but it could be expensive like trying to like buy all this stuff at one time can be a lot right but like if you say like this week I'm going to add blueberries and fennel to my shopping list and then, you know, each time that you go shopping, just build up, build up, build up. And you can get these herbs from, you know, your local market, grocery store. Um, the Asian market is a great place to get some of these like herbs that you can't find in your traditional um, grocery stores. The Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique has organic herbs as well. Um, and, and, you know, of course, growing your own. And it's really good to have herbs because you can use them for so many things. You can cook with them. You can make teas out of them. You can do um, like topical applications. Like say you're cramping and you want to make a compress. Or if you have, you know, if your vagina is irritated and you want to make a soothing compress. You can do that with herbs. You can treat yourself holistically with herbs. Your kitchen can be your medicine cabinet, your healing sanctuary. If you've got some herbs that, you know, you don't like the taste of them, make a tincture. And then put it in your smoothies or, you know, put it in your water. Like valerian root is, is a disgusting herb. But it comes in a tincture. You can drop it in your drink. It doesn't have any. It doesn't have a, a taste or any flavor. It doesn't alter the way that your drink tastes. And you're getting your 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 fix of herbs. <laughs> your daily dose of herbs. You don't have to drink it as a hot tea. You guys with me? So I really want you to think about how you can begin to heal your womb space, how you can begin to um, treat your womb space, pamper your womb space using foods and herbs. Okay. And, and you guys, you can get creative with it. You know what I mean? Like, I love mixing calendula in my salads and in my, like, greens that I cook. Like, you can really get creative. 
and your family is is consuming these herbs and and getting the medicine that they need and, and and you know boosting their immune system naturally and all these things and they don't even know it they don't even know it my family drinks medicinal tea at least once a week doesn't even know it <laughs> just add a little honey or agave to sweeten Which brings me to a point too. Um, medicinal tea. So the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique has Yoni Steam Packs. Um, or should I say Yoni Herbal Blends. That can be used for a Yoni Steam or you can use it to consume the herbs, right? And so in order for your um, herbs to be considered medicinal, you would steep them and let, them, let it steep for like a couple of hours or overnight. So if you're making any type of herbal tea and you want it to be medicinal, then you want to steep it for hours or overnight. The longer you steep, the more pow powerful and potent and stronger it is. So, like, for example, we have a, a blend called the Goddess Blend. It is my favorite, especially when I'm on my cycle or when I'm about to start my cycle. Um, if I know that my cycle is starting, I will, like, make a whole picture of it and just drink it cold. Like, steep a big pot, let it sit overnight. The next day, I'll add, you know, sweetener and, and go like that. Okay. So moving on to the next room of the house that can be your healing sanctuary, your bathroom. One of the things that we didn't talk about in depth, we kind of touched on it, is creating sacred space and creating um, a space for you to do your womb work. You guys. Your bathroom is the perfect place to heal your womb, right? Why is that? Well, one, when we are having our menstrual cycle, that's where we go and, you know, take care of ourselves. But having things in your, in your bathroom that can help with your physical womb space, like herbal infused um vaginal what's the word that i'm looking for like a douche sorry I couldn't my mind went blank um like say for example you get yeast infections a lot you can make an application of uh coconut oil tea tree oil and lavender oil that can be used to cure a yeast infection and it's all organic. You could do boric acid suppositories. Now, I don't recommend doing that all the time, but it definitely does help. Make sure you drink lots of water. You can also use your bathroom to do the spiritual work of your womb space, right? So when you take your spiritual baths and you have your candles and your flowers and your um, plant um essential oils or, or plant essence flowers you know things like that your bathroom can be your sacred space your mirror can be your sacred space when you're when you're and i'm going back to the menstrual cycle um, but let's say that you're having a menstrual cycle and you're in the bathroom and you're, you know, showering or changing yourself or doing whatever you do. That's a perfect opportunity for you to honor yourself, honor the wisdom within your menstrual cycle or your moon cycle. Um, we talked last night about your life being a ritual, like making everything a ritual, including your time in the bathroom is sacred. As you're adorning yourself, as you're preparing yourself, pampering yourself, getting yourself together, that is a ritual. 
you know, as you're showering and you're washing, you know, um, envision the water being cleansing and, and it's it's cleansing away any ailments or any illnesses or any um, heavy spiritual energetic things that you may have experienced. As you're washing yourself and you're rubbing on your womb space, you know, speak life into her, honor her, you know, um, awaken the blood flow with stimulation. As you're washing and putting on your lotions and your creams and things like that. Okay. Any questions so far? Nope, no questions. Let me see, let me see. Okay. So I don't think it's possible to talk about the physical aspects of the womb without talking about the life cycles that we go through as women because for each cycle of life, there's a different, um, come on, come on, Jay. Y'all, I don't feel good. <laughs> it is like bothering me. For each level of life that you encounter, there is, there are different ways that you can honor your womb space, that you can take care of your womb space, right? So when a woman is first born, the infancy stage, you know. Of course, making sure that you're changing your, your diapers, your baby's diaper in a timely fashion, um, not using like a whole bunch of baby powders and things like that, you know, wiping from the front to the back, um, not leaving a lot of moisture on the baby for too long. That's how you can honor and take care of your physical womb space as an infant. Where are we at? The, um, the next phase of life is the pu puberty stage. This is the stage where a human being establishes, um, we're going to talk about her identity, right? <coughs> Usually, um, a young girl has her first cycle or which we call monarchy um around like 12 or 13 but here lately these kids have been starting their cycles at like 10 and 11 so having conversations with our young daughters our young sisters early about how to honor themselves how to take care of themselves how to cleanse themselves properly how the vagina works um we always hear like the vagina is self-cleansing the vagina is self-cleansing yes the inside of the vaginal canal is self-cleansing you still have to wash the outside right which is considered the vulva and so making sure that our young girls understand their body in a healthy way is going to be very 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 beneficial to their womb wellness journey moving forward at the hidden jewel wellness boutique we do what is called a red tent ceremony where we honor a young woman's first cycle and oh my gosh i was able to do one with um my soul sister and her daughter and it was absolutely beautiful and so it 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 was a way to reshape the conversation about a woman's cycle because you know how we always like oh my god i'm starting my period oh my god i'm dreading my period oh my god it's that time of the month oh my god i'm about to be bitchy da, 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 da. but like when you really take the opportunity to honor the womb cycle for what it is you know the first period for what it is like you are now a woman like you now have the ability to bring life into this world you know you now have like ancient cyclical wisdom that is being you know um offered to you like it's a beautiful thing and so that puberty stage is very crucial that we um have the right conversations 
with our daughters and our nieces. Oh, the ceremony is beautiful. It, oh, it's red everywhere. It's just, it's so, it's so, it's so, it's so beautiful. One of the things that I found in my research when I was, um, looking into like why why young girls are starting their cycle earlier is because there's a lot of hormones that's being put in our food right gmos and all this stuff and the pollutants in the air and all this stuff that goes back to your kitchen being your healing sanctuary like understanding the impact that what you're what you're consuming has on you excuse me and your children your young girls like you wonder why like these girls are walking around not even just as girls like because i have two boys my my boys look like grown men like i got a linebacker and a running back in my house and they're only 15 and 16 mustache facial hair it's the hormones So definitely like teaching our young girls and having conversations with them is very, very, very beneficial and necessary. It's no more of this. Oh, they're too young to talk about sex. They're too young to talk about their bodies. They're too young to talk about masturbation. No, because society and the world is shaping them early. So it's up to us to properly guide them and talk to them and teach them this wisdom that we all carry the next phase of life is the sexual maturation phase or the reproductive stage this is between um this cycle occurs between late teens and premenopause which is you know women in their late 40s this stage of life is like when you know you're you're trying to for for the most part like women are um, either trying to have babies or they're dealing with like fertility issues, infertility issues. You know, this is when you see like an increase of like STDs and you see an increase of like your PCOS and all of these different kinds of diseases in your womb space because of, you know, the hormones and what you're consuming and those types of things. So like being careful about, again, what you eat. And also in this phase, it's important to realize that who you are sexually active with also plays a part in your womb wellness. If I don't consume meat and I don't consume tobacco and I don't consume anything unhealthy, but I lay down with a guy who smokes and eats meat and all this other kind of stuff. And then I'm wondering why every time we get together, I'm having like reoccurring BV or reoccurring yeast infections or whatever the case may be. It's because what he's consuming and what I'm consuming don't go together and it's throwing off my pH balance. And this is why womb wisdom is important because if you don't understand what your body needs, what your body responds to, and you're out here laying with everybody else. Last night we talked about the physical, excuse me, the spiritual and energetics behind, you know, just sleeping with any and everybody. But physically speaking, like it is killing you. It is throwing off your pH balance. You don't you don't consume tobacco. The person that you're engaging in sexual activity with consumes tobacco. They perform oral sex. That is now inside of all of your tissues and your bloodstream and all of that. It is now inside of your system. And then you're wondering why your vagina is irritated. Like, do you like... I really hope that over these last three days that you really see the importance of womb wisdom and how much it plays a part in every aspect of your life. Make sense now? Good, 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 good. So this reproductive stage that we're in, right? Late teens to early 40s. That's a big chunk of our lives as women. And it's a, a very important um, part of our lives. 
because it's literally shaping how, you know, your reproductive system acts and responds. Like, if you, like think about all the different diseases that women deal with in their reproductive system between like, you know, 18 and early 40. All of the STDs, all of the, you know, it's, it's, and, and it's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, when I was, um, in, um, school, right. And we were talking about like, uh, sexual education and all of that. And you learn about the different STDs and how like men can go without any symptoms for years and not know that they have anything and like lay with the woman and all of a sudden, like, she's having discharge and irritation and like breakouts and all this stuff like like beloved in case no one has told you today please allow me to be the first your hidden jewel is sacred it is so sacred your vagina your womb space your uterus all of this is so sacred it it, it is so sacred it is so precious. Like you really have to be careful with it. You like y'all, we even have to be careful with the type of underwear that we wear. Did you know that the kind of underwear you wear, how often you wear that underwear can impact your reproductive system. The heels that you wear. I was reading this book and literally like, and I love stilettos. I love them, but wearing high heels for a long periods of time can tilt your uterus. What the fuck? Now, this is not to say that you can't like live and, 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 you know, have fun and wear what you want to wear and eat what you want to eat, but moderation, knowing what your womb space can and cannot handle. This reproductive age, whether you are trying to have children or not, it's a very crucial time. It's a very crucial time. And I want to say this. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Because I understand that... Um, we all have different experiences and relationships with our womb space. There could be a sister among us who has had a hysterectomy who no longer has her uterus. Although your physical womb space may not be functioning the way it was intended or the way you want it to does not negate your ability to honor and take care of your womb space because we will always have the energetic womb space they go hand in hand they go hand in hand so although you may not have your 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 womb anymore, because I get this a lot, I don't have a womb. Is womb wisdom for me? Yes, it is. Because you still have the energetic womb space. And what you eat still counts with your overall health. Who you allow to lay with you still counts with your overall health. Do you see what I'm saying? And with that being said, because we're talking about the physical, having a hysterectomy brings its own set of challenges that can be addressed with foods, herbs, 
things like that. So it's still important to understand and have a connection to your womb space. Does that make sense? Back to the cycles. <clears throat> the climacteric period or the menopause stage is the cycle of life that starts when you begin to... Um, no longer have ovarian activity. So basically, you're no longer getting a cycle. You're no longer producing, you know, eggs. So it's typically five years before and after menopause. So, you know, there's perimenopause, postmenopause. And when you don't have any cycle for 12 years, I was to say 12 years, for 12 months consistently, that is when you are considered to be in menopause, which brings on the personal summers, as my grandmother would call it, <laughs> the hot flashes. But again, all of that can be addressed with herbs and the food that you eat. You don't have to suffer through hot flashes. You don't have to deal with excuse me, the symptoms of menopause. There are herbs for that. There are vitamins for that. All right, where are we at on time? Oh, we're doing good, Jay. The last thing that I want to talk about as it pertains to like the physical health of your womb space, movement. We talked about last night how movement and dance can help you connect to your womb space, you know, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, like, you know, the sensual side. But like physically speaking, there are yoga moves and um Things that you can do to make sure that your womb space is in its optimal health. Hip opening exercises, lunges and stretches and, and squats and things like that to really make sure that the blood is flowing and circulating in your womb space. And another thing that you can do that I absolutely love to do, and I, rec I recommend that every woman should do it at the end of the night, especially if you wear heels. <coughs> Putting your legs up against the wall or your headboard and allowing the blood flow to flow back into your womb space. So when you're like, I'm going to try to demonstrate, but like, Whoa. Can y'all see me like this? Like I'm laying flat on my back with my legs in the air. Doing this at night allows the blood flow to flow back into your womb space. Okay. Oh, and it feels so good. have been a better way to demonstrate that oh well <laughs> did you guys see my tail i'm wearing my one my unicorn onesie it's like my best friend <laughs> all right i feel like i gave you guys a lot of information tonight um do you have any questions are there any questions Mackenzie, what are you, I mean, Kimberly, what are you doing now? You got your legs up in the air? I'm serious. I do that at night. Oh, and another thing too, um, dry brushing. That's another thing that I like to do. When you wake up in the morning, 
dry brushing or massaging your womb space, right? Massaging your, your lower your lower back, your hip area. Getting that blood flow, massaging your um your legs and your thighs, like getting all that blood circulating is really, really good for you. There are places where you can get um, a womb massage. I'm trying to find someone that specializes in womb massages to bring them to the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique. I don't want to be that person. But there are some places where you can go to get a womb massage. And, and that can also help with your reproductive system, your menstrual cycle, fertility issues. You can do it yourself. Just massage in your womb space. I gotta lift up my fupa. <laughs> Best cleansers are least irritating. Honestly, Castile soap. Castile soap. But if you, if you, um, anything that is free of like dyes, parabens, um, um essential not essential oils like uh um synthetic fragrances like your ivory soap is going to be a good one there's one that i absolutely love i get it on amazon it's infused with tea tree and cranberry juice um it's a really really good one but just using plain castile soap all of the, now there are some there are some cleansers <clears throat> and some companies that do like yoni soaps and yoni washes and things like that and they and they want to um want you to smell like roses all the time or um what's that place uh uh bath and body works that stuff is not good for your your vajay jay mm -mm. We do make soaps at the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique that are very safe. All of them except for one for your womb space. But just plain Castile soap. Dr. Bronner's is a good one. Um, some people can get irritated with like the peppermint one. But those are really good. You really want to stay away from like your Irish Spring, not Irish Springs. What's the one? Saint Summer's Eve, like that kind of stuff. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. But really, you know. See what works best for you. But anything, for the most part, anything free of like uh, fragrances, perfumes, dyes. It's not going to be good for you. Any other questions? Ah, some some more tips that I like to use. Um, when you go to bed at night, free and clear. Sleeping with no underwear is really good. Cotton underwear, the best ever. You you want to limit, especially in the summertime, you want to limit your lace and your silk and satins and things like that. They're not good for your JJ. Your underwear being too big or too small also plays a part in irritation and infections. Oh my goodness, I can't end 
the the night about physical stuff without talking about yoni steaming duh who in here knows what yoni steaming is does anyone know what yoni steaming is have you heard of yoni steaming vaginal steaming v steams So yoni steaming, I consider it a spa day for your JJ. It's vaginal steaming. It is life. You've not experienced it, Kimberly. If you are in South Carolina in the Myrtle Beach area or can get to me, you know that's what we do, right? <laughs> and if not, then we have at-home steam kits and you can do it yourself. And I can walk you through it. It is life. So the way yoni steaming works is that you are sitting on a some kind of something with a hole in the middle. You sit over steam. Um, and for the most part, you can use herbs. Some people just use um, water and, and steam. Some people use like pink salt. Excuse me, the power of steam itself is going to be beneficial to open up your um, pores. It helps to like move any stagnant blood that you may experience. It helps to balance out your uh, your hormones, regulate your sight. Nope, not the water itself. Hold on. The water itself <laughs> helps to uh, rebalance your, your pH. There we go. The herbs that you select that gets into your bloodstream is how we like focus on different um, reproductive issues. So say like you're trying to like um, get pregnant and you're having fertility issues, then we may use our PCOS blend. Um, if you have like reoccurring yeast infections or if you're actively having an infection, you can use yoni steaming to get rid of that using our purify blend. And so yoni steaming is a great way to maintain your womb health. You can do it at your house. You can go to a place and get it done. What I would suggest is doing your research first. Um, Yes, come on. It is amazing. I would suggest like the first time that you do it, speak with a professional because you can burn yourself. It is steam um, using the wrong herbs. Um, there there are ways that, you know, yoni steaming can be a bad thing. But overall, yoni steaming is life. I recommend every woman do it at least once a month for maintenance. If you want to know more about Yoni steaming and how you can either come to the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique or do it in your home, let me know. Okay? Yoni pearls, stay away. Yoni pearls are um, balls of herbs that you stick inside of your vagina and you're supposed to leave them in for a couple of days, at least three days. And it's supposed to strip your um, cervix. Your body does that naturally anyway. Even if you do not have a menstrual cycle, your body creates... Oh, I can't think of the name right now, but there is a mucus that forms within the inside of your vagina. And when you are having that discharge, it is uh, shedding its cells and reproducing new cells. I think it's every couple of minutes your your body does that. I forgot how many minutes, but your body does that. So your your cervix sheds itself once a month when you're having your, your menstrual cycle. But then on a daily basis, the lining of your vagina is uh, renewing itself. So this idea that you need to stick herbs up there for three days to ship your vagina, it is not healthy. Um, you can get diseases and it is going against your body's natural rhythm and anything that goes against your body's natural with rhythm, we know is unhealthy. So if I can give you any advice, stay away from the yoni pearls. Okay. Any other questions? My waist beads were like itching.
Any other questions? Tomorrow, I'm going to announce the winner of our giveaway. You are so welcome. It is my pleasure. Um, I also am aware that there's information that I have to come back and post. Um, during the day, I, I try to rest because I'm feeling horrible. Okay. Well, I'm here. You guys have me in this group until January 30th. So please post your questions. Um, just so you know, what you post inside of this group is only seen in by the people in this group. If you um, have something private, you can inbox me at either the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutiques page or the Javon A. Frazier page to ask any like personal questions. But what you post inside of this group stays in this group. It's only seen by people in this group. This is a closed group and you have to be a member to see what is in it. Don't forget to share your wins, takeaways um, on your pages and tag myself, Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique, in it so that I can see it using hashtag Awaken Womb keeper i have been enjoying what you all have been sharing so far oh it's getting cold out there i got the window open because all these lights are like hot and now it's like freezing down here if there are no other questions then we are going to go ahead and end day three you guys have asked that we do a private vending experience so that you can see what we have um yeah. Like these mala beads that I love are made by me. Rose quartz, rhodonite, and something else. Isn't that beautiful? So as soon as I get everything together, I will let you know when we're going to go live. It will be absolutely before the 30th. Whew. And uh, yeah that is it let us close out i love you all so much i love sitting in circle with you ladies thank you for sharing your time your heart your womb space and your mind with me and uh let us close out deep breath in Exhale it out. <sighs> Deep breath in. Inhale the sounds of the sacral chakra healing bowl. Exhale it out. <sighs> Your womb space is awakened. Inhale it in. Then exhale it out. It is not too late to add ladies to this group. Um, as long as the group is open, you can continue to add your sisters, your friends, your mothers, your daughters. Let's share this medicine with the world. I love you all so much. And remember, when a woman heals her womb, she heals the world. Good night.